Discovering Lifeless, Bagus, the Leaf Man. You know, I talked to a scientist, and he reminded me that all kinds of things in nature have electricity. Think of an electric eel. It has a tremendous amount of electricity. Now, some of these masters have been able to generate that kind of electricity. He also reminded me that every single cell in your body has a little bit of a charge, and you have 50 trillion cells. And when you add that up, it's about the strength of a bolt of lightning. Now, these masters have trained their energy systems to be coherent, to line up and direct that force out from their body and in and through other people. Now, we call this man Bagus, but we also called him the leaf man because he has to hold a leaf. He has got so much charge that if he touches you directly, it's too much. It can be damaging to the person he touches. So when he's activated, he uses a leaf or a flower. He touches you, and it helps to open up your body's circuits to expand the charge that you can hold within yourself. Now, there's exercises that we can do to activate the chi, the life force energy within you. Are you ready to try something? Are you ready to feel your electricity? Try this for 30 seconds with me. You're going to rub these pressure points at the ends of your fingers together. It's basically just rubbing your fingernails together back and forth. Now breathe deep. Exhale all the way out. Rub them vigorously like you're starting a fire in your hands. Come on, do this with me. Breathe deep. I want you to feel your inner power. Energy is that first step to unleashing your superhuman abilities. Take one more deep breath. Relax. Bring your hands to your lap and feel. Just take a moment to feel the energy and the electricity ignited in your hands. Sense and feel the buzzing and the tingling. That is the life force energy that you have within you. It's the spark that keeps you alive. Energy is that inner luminosity. It's the divine spark. It's called by many names over many cultures. In China, it was known as Qi. In India, Prana. All cultures have known about this aliveness that we all have within ourselves. Now, we're going to travel to Indonesia and meet a master who has developed tremendous electrical powers. His name is Bagus, which in Indonesia means the great. Now let's get ready to adventure to Indonesia and meet David and Bagus. Bagus is going to perform a ritual and empowerment where he's going to use his Kundalini to activate mine. His power is so intense, so dramatic, that he has to use a leaf or a flower to touch me. If he would touch me directly, he would probably give me an heart attack and literally blast me away.
So you feel like being heavy, like electric heat, and like the heart just. Boom, boom, boom. But gradually, what happens is that the channels of your body are like a, an electric wire. So you start, and your wire is very small, and gradually you you upgrade um, the voltage that your body can take. So your channel become wider, and the amount of power sort of that can go through is, is larger. It's a very demanding process, but it's the whole process of this. Rising of the Kundalini is what we're here for, and uh, I hope you're looking at this because uh, it's very rare to see. We work very hard just for you. Mm. This is a tester. Uh, there is an LED light. It is used to test if there is a current. But because this energy very often doesn't register on a normal voltmeter, but it can light up an LED. Uh, so that's what we use. If I touch him, you can see this LED coming on. Well, Sorry, it's a bad word. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So some more. Ida Bagus. Bagus means the great. <laughs> he was breathing, but he's uh, he's a priest, and so we see in the movie that he's doing special mantras and yeah. chanting, and this activates his power. Uh, okay, so but as a normal everyday guy, you can walk up and touch him. And yeah, of course, he has to activate. He has to activate. He's a priest. He developed his gift through specific the practice of uh, mantras and connection with. That's energies. They call them, let's say, gods. No? Yeah. Sort of intelligent energies, uh, together with, of course, the set of fundamental breathing techniques and movements. Mm. So, did he do these breathing techniques? They should really. Oh, okay. All of them. All the, of them. It's universal. I mean, there is there is no way around. Either there are very few people that manage to find the the key inside their mind and open these energies without anything because yeah. it's here, or you need to use some kind of technique to. To trigger it, to, you know, yeah. to trick yourself uh, into doing it. Uh, yeah, you know, it's a very interesting thing because ultimately it's just here. Uh -huh. But because we do not have access here, we need to sort of go around it. Around about. Yeah. We need to circumvent the whole Colosseum yeah. before yeah. we get to the center. Many think the Borobudur is just a temple, but it's so much more than that. We are standing on a three-dimensional map, a three-dimensional mandala, a representation of the universe, both outer and inner, a representation of the infinite, a representation of your own mind, and a map out of your own self. Slowly open your hand. Feel it. This is the vast expense of peace that comes from letting go of all resistance for no amount of resistance will ever give you peace so open your eyes and expand yourself beyond these walls until you start to encompass everything 